So. Es muss noch eine Präsentation hier rausgeladen werden. Okay, dann warten wir. Die sind ja gerade im Machen. Machst du die Moderation? So zwischen den Blöcken, ja. Vielleicht wäre es cool, am Anfang noch mal zu sagen, dass die Annahmestelle für die ähm, Dolmetschdinger ja. und die Garderobe ja. um 14.30 Uhr schließen. Das haben wir am Ende noch bei Organ okay. sagen, auf jeden cool. Fall mit 14.30 Uhr. Erst 14 Uhr war mir gesagt, aber gut, vielleicht sagt man den Leuten auch nur eine Zeit. Ich glaube, 14.30 Uhr war, damit es dann 15 ja, Uhr klappt. Ja, okay, gut. Aber von mir aus 14 Uhr, das ja. kann ja nicht schaden. Passt ein bisschen. Ja. Von hier aus, wa? Okay, guten Morgen. Will ich zu hören? Eins, zwei, eins, zwei? Nee. Okay, so. Alles klar. Guten Morgen zusammen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning also to auditors. Six and the other one that's listening. Thanks for getting up so early to, in order to come to this panel today. We have a very exciting day ahead of us. We want to see what happened here over the last couple of days. We want to find out how we can move on. And we want to try and come to an end of this conference. There were many observers attending the different events and try and try to gather all the information in the evening. So they're going to tell us about the results and findings. S please come on stage and tell me what you what, what your findings were. Wisst ihr, welche Präsi das war? Äh, Internet. Internet? Ja, denn wir haben gar keine Präsi. Ah, ihr habt keine Präsi? Nee, nee. Ah, ist ja, klar. Nur manche, aber die wissen ah, das klar. Nee, wir ja. haben keine Präsi. Okay, dann lassen wir das da. Good morning, everybody. Bonjour. Guten Morgen, good morning, bonjour. Buongiorno. Die observers, die sogenannten. Um We are the observers, and it was our task to observe what happened at the conference, to try and find out what the main observations and findings were, to sum up the events and panels, 
so that you don't, you don't have to feel you missed out on anything. We met every evening from 7 till 8 for one hour. And in this hour, we talked about what we experienced. And then we did not have the time to reflect on it. We're sorry. <laughs> and it was also relatively viel. Also, it was quite a lot. OK, so maybe I'll stay with German. It was quite a lot which you probably noticed, but I think we did a good job. And we have tried to sum up the whole conference in one paper. So this is the conference. No, actually, we have to admit that we didn't quite um, manage to illustrate the whole conference in just one paper. But we still want to let you know what our observations were. And we will probably break this down into our personal impressions, the impressions we had of this conference. We felt that, there was, that the conference was very, very well organized. Yeah, da muss ich wahrscheinlich gar nicht I probably won't have to add a lot to this because you all saw it your, for yourselves. This seems like a small island, but it's an island that's getting bigger. Bigger and bigger. And we tried to conceive this as a kind of space between the outside world, the reality, center ground, ground whatever you want to call it, and our small world the common ground, those who fight for a different world and try to build it. Between this reality outside and our common ground, there are many paths linking the two. Sometimes people are pushed out of this reality outside pushed to joining us inside. Sometimes they are forced, sometimes they just realize for themselves that the outside world is not as it should be. They try and find explanation for what explanations for what happens outside, not just at an emotional level, but also at an activism level, at a scientific level. And the impress impression we had was that this really made the success of this movement. That this is the reason why there is so much positive energy in this room. We try to come up with different metaphors, like this one, saying that there's a kind of cognitive dissonance outside, whereas here on the inside we felt like we were, it was more holistic, we were complete, we could be ourselves. I attended this conference as a scientist, I also um, took part as an artist, I'm also an activist, so I can approach this, this topic from, from different aspects. And I think everybody finds their own approach to this topic, whether it's through art or gardening or science. And this is what makes this whole conference so very exciting. Nevertheless, there were also some stumbling blocks on the way into, on the way to a, a degrowth society. One question was, for example, why are there so many men talking and attending, where is the feminist perspective? It was really about power relations. Who is leading the discourse? Are there some VIPs in this whole movement, some leaders? This 
for us seem to be the stumbling blocks. Who is actually attending this conference? Who can take part? We are relatively white middle class here at this conference. Maybe 80% from Germany, but also a lot of people from other countries, other contexts. But we felt that still there could have been a greater mix. Anything you have to add on this? Okay, so much for the general part. We would now like to share a few personal impressions with you. Christoph, uh, to perform as this white male middle class, uh, because you, everybody knows he's an alien with many green arms, and, but this would be a little disturbing to speak, I hear. Yeah, good morning, Verena, from the art part. And uh, while you might have happened to see on this, that map that art was somewhere on the left-hand side in the corner with a big wall, a big black wall around, um, this is, could be one perception, as it's always the case that art is a kind of side effect, the creative space where we all relax. I was, as an art observer, I was very, very happy to find uh, art everywhere uh, in the way we all can understand uh, art as our profession, as our uh, utopias, uh, to be um, um, people who are willing to learn the whole lifelong, lifelong learning, and to be open for uh, other ideas and uh, changes and to be confronted with the position of uh, being or being in dialogue with many um, others that have completely different mindsets and uh, different ideas, different methods and different tools. So uh, I observed this whole conference as a perfect opportunity to learn a lot about different mindsets, uh, completely different mindsets, tools and method methods. So um, I think uh, the biggest observation is thank you f to everybody, uh, that everybody came here with this um, open, open mindset. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ernest, I'm a student in Austria, and I'm very happy to attend this conference. I study ecological economics, and actually I would like to start my impression by a metaphor. I really like to walk through the yard and through the positive energy of the yard. And when I, when I arrived, there is hanging this grass ball somewhere up there, and somebody started to explain, me to explain to me that it's actually a demolition ball. So it's a demolition ball made from grass, something, a demolition ball which is growing. And I think that was my impression I had in the science. I mostly attended science uh, sessions. I experienced a, a large critique in the scientific discourse. However, a big integration of different theories, uh, finding a common ground, finding new concepts to understand the problems we are facing. Because I think that's the experience I take home. I think it's kind of a searching process to understand the world we actually are aiming for. And I think that was a great experience. And I want to thank you all for that. So um, I came to this conference with, I think, the very typical misgivings and skepticisms of a traditional leftist activist regarding the degrowth discourse. Exactly. How, how uh, <laughs> I usually produce that reaction. How, how, how political is, is, is the movement? How, what are its forms of collective practices? Is it, in fact, a movement? And I came in with this agenda of trying to get everybody to participate in direct actions that we're going to take at the climate camp next year in Western Germany. And that was my strategy. But I realized that there are other kinds of paths to degrowth that people were following here because I ended up sort of being in some workshops which weren't traditional panel formats where some people, some kind of cadre activists would share their strategy and say, please all join us. I think the workshops that were the most powerful were in fact the ones where everybody got to speak and participate and share their experience and, and com communalize, like collectivize their, 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 their emotions and their psychological experience of what it means to know that we'll soon be living in a degrowth society, either by design or by disaster. And it made me think of the consciousness raising circles of the feminist movement of the 1960s, because to come back to the beginning, 
What is so political about this conference is precisely the collectivation of our experience of knowing that the shit is going to have to end, and maybe it'll turn more shit, it'll get better. But if we don't collectivize our experience or our language, then there will not be a degrowth movement, and that was so political about the conference. Thank you very much. I will talk in German. Ich werde auf I will speak in German. <laughs> so as you probably heard, everybody had their own approach, their the personal approach, how to attend this conference. I wrote a kind of ethnographic diary because I was really fascinated by this aspect to try and find out what already exists in this movement. And I think it's a very good tool because it allows me not having to be neutral as a scientist, as a scholar, and because it allows me to describe what's going on between the different categories that we have. It allows me to describe the interhuman aspects and the divergences between what's being said and what's being done. I felt that I was fascinating, that I was participating, that I was a bit worried, that I was um, excited to see what was going on, and I'd like to report a little on what I found out. I was also part of the Orga team, so for two years I was able to observe what, what happened, how it was all organized. I also organized the stream, for example something that needed a lot of preparation even ahead of the conference and that um, was able to combine a lot of movements. It was Friday. The fourth conference day is called uh, Visions and Transformations. There's an anarchic, anarchistic activist and a text advisor who are waving to me from the queue. There are many controversies in this conference. The Augusteum seems gigantic to me. So this is a kind of eclectic cabin booth between Star Wars and reality. The new interpretation of the Paulina Church was done by an architect, architect who had just before that created an artificial island for the Olympic Games in Sochi. This reminds me uh, This reminds me of many things. In the highest floor of the university power is not where you would find um, social sciences, but it's it's the people from mathematics science. It surprises me to see that even small details are very much regulated at this conference. It seems to me like we are trying to, to, to bypass a truck by cycling. But at the moment, we're still right behind the track and we cannot see ahead of it. We don't know what's coming towards us. The group of people is very present in my mind. They are doing speed dating for scientists. Trying to develop their own personality in a, in a lack of time. There's also a, rest, a resting room where people are trying to return to their own mindset. We leave our shoes outside. There's a jazz band playing in the courtyard. It feels like a gardening party. However, you won't smell burnt sausages. Lusabo and Vamskat 
big kitchen create a kind of opportunity to cut vegetables together and start talking? Is this a kind of fair where everybody can have their own particular approach? Or are we are we seeing a new social idea being created? Suddenly, I'm in a room for 40, but there's 80 people in there. There's tensions in the room. The speaker seems to be talking to the audience when talking about her research about um, multinational companies. You die when you don't, you don't die if you don't grow. There's the founder of a cooperative Projektmanager aus Basel. Yesterday, for example, in um, a panel, uh, there was somebody talking about um, weakening the strong, and that person who spoke about this was booted out. Uh, nevertheless, he was able to continue his discussion. And now the cooperative uh, networks who want to bring lots of things together, they're trying to ignore so many other things. So what I'm trying to give you is a literal impression of my last four days at this conference. So this is basically what I'm doing. I'm reading out a literary text by giving you my impressions. So I went to various uh, events and uh, what I see here is uh, a lot of things happening and I like that very much. Hello, ich bin Julia Lemle. Hello, my name is Julia Lemle. And I also have an artist's name, Julia, which is different. I will also attend the waiting room this afternoon as a performance artist, but also as an observer. To me, the conference started with a wonderful workshop that was called Performing Change Together. And it lay kind of the groundwork for what I perceive as something artistic and an emotional level, which I think is very important for this topic and for this conference. Because if we don't feel strong ourselves, if we don't find the energy ourselves, then of course we can't energize others. But at the same time I felt that there was still a kind of separation, arts on the one hand and theory on the other hand, on the other side. This is interesting to see because actually it's about linking the two and I hope that one day we won't have to name them as separate, as separate entities. I also participated in the workshop audio work by Friendly Fire and I think it was a great experience to be allowed to be outside, to move, to just open up, not to look for solutions too much, not to argue too much as it often happens in academic circles. And then there was a moment when two performers, two female performers, kind of moved along the street in a very slow manner and um, I just joined them with my bag and my coffee and I think that was a great kind of performance. And I think the metaphor here was somebody preparing the way somebody exposing themselves and saying, okay, I'm going to go first and you can follow me, then this is a great experience. What I hope for is that at the next degrowth conference, and especially in the field of arts, there'll be more feminist topic, explicitly feminist topic, that it, that it will be impossible to have a panel on arts with just male attendance, with just male participants. I hope that this will change in the future. I was also wondering why the refugee struggle 
that takes place in Berlin was not at all being discussed here. So apparently it is there at least in your minds because I'm myself an activist and a performer. So to me it's clear that you cannot separate these aspects, that it doesn't make sense to separate them. Because being b aware of things, performing, is exactly what enables me to engage in discussions with the police, to engage in protests. I can't really separate the two aspects. And I w I'd hope for more people to have this kind of view. So I'd like to invite you, if you come to Berlin again, when you come, please try and be, s try and live up live the principle of solidarity. I'll try to do it myself as well. Nicola Bullard, and um, I was also in the Observer uh, group, which was um, a, very, a very good experience. So thanks for inviting me to do that. Um, I, I, I haven't really been able to come up with a very sort of um, a compelling metaphor or, or analysis or poetic description, but somehow I keep coming back to um, um, Mrs. Butler, and you don't know who Mrs. Butler is. Mrs. Butler is my Form Three biology teacher, and when in night and you can do the do the maths, right? I was in Form Three in 1972, when um, when Limits to Growth was published. And Mrs. Butler gave that to us as our textbook to read in, in Form 3. So I, I credit Mrs. Butler with my, my sort of beginning of my process of politicisation. So thank you, Mrs. Butler. Um, but I, and I, I guess I had a little bit of that, that sort of mood, that sense here that it's sort of, it's one of those watershed moments, right, where you sort of, people gather from different places, there's sort of new ways of seeing things, new ways of thinking about things. And hopefully for, for many of you, and I hope all of you, it's either the beginning of a lifelong engagement, or at least for those of us who are already very engaged, it gives us new perspectives, new visions, new ways of thinking about things. Um, and certainly for me, it, that it's been in that... Um, in that sense, it's been a really wonderful experience. And for those of you who were at the opening session, I, I made the, now I realise, very flippant remark that um, degrowth is a difficult word. Um, I think it still is a difficult word, but I think it's a very, very interesting word. And I think it's a word that actually gives us, and I, I think about it as this sort of process of deconstructing growth but deconstructing growth from many different perspectives, from di many different um, uh, levels and, and ways of seeing the world. So I think, think in, that, in that sense it brings us together to kind of unravel this big, knotty, complicated thing and sort of together we're in this process of unravelling and, and doing something new. So, um, yeah, degrowth is a difficult word, but it's a very, very interesting word and I think it's one that's worth continuing to pick a way at and to, to, um, to work together to, um, to deconstruct growth and to build something else. So thank you very much. So it's now? Okay. Um, as participants to this conference, we uh, actually wanted to ask you as well, what, is, what, is your, what are you taking out of this conference and uh, what, is, what are your observations about the conference, uh, your reflections? So we would actually ask you to, to talk into groups, to discuss a little bit into, in groups uh, about this question. What is the metaphor that could de depict the growth according to you? Um, is the growth a social movement for you? Uh, what is the growth against? And what are the power relationships that the growth has to, to face? And finally, uh, what are you going to take out of this conference? So if you can just discuss this in uh, um, five minutes, and I don't know whether... <laughs> <laughs> or you can discuss anything you want to 
or anything you want. I mean, you don't have to discuss all these questions. Maybe it's <laughs> too much. Um, I don't know, actually, maybe we're going to be able to visualize the pad as well. Let's see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can start now and then maybe we will. Yeah, it's there. So if you have a laptop or a smartphone, you can actually type in your answer to these questions, or if you prefer, you can just talk to your neighbor. It's written there. You have the website on the top, of course. Maybe just a, a very small remark. This will just take a couple of minutes, but the pad will be online for some time longer. So if you want to add anything later, that's okay. So after saying okay that the pad is continue to be open, uh, yeah. shall we just say thank you very much or and maybe you say the thing with the pad and then like okay. close the yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, okay, I see you have a lot to talk about, which is good. <laughs> okay, so... <coughs> Thank you very much for the discussion. The pad is actually continue to be open, so uh, if you want to, con you, you can continue actually to write on the pad later on after the conference, so you can continue to reflect actually on the conference and write on the pad later on. So, uh, so I was saying that uh, the pad will be continue to be open, so if you want to write on it later on after the conference, it would be really great to have your reflections um, after having thought more carefully <laughs> about the conference. <coughs> jo, das war's erstmal von den Observers. So I think this was all the observers wanted to say. Thanks very much for the attention and for your like. And I think you did a very good job with of that with regard to the schedule. But very quickly, we will now start with um, observations about the gap process. Please let us know what your observations were, and please do a job that is as good as the one that the other group did. Would you like to start? So, hello everyone. Um, it's great to hello. see here um, um, this great audience. Uh, I am Walter, she's Suzanne. We are two of the um, four main organizers of the GAP, plus um, uh, several helpers that we had. Um, and um, the group assembly process uh, that we shorten as GAP is a process that has been uh, started, um, well, it's actually in the origins of these international degrowth conferences. It is from a group assembly process in Gaillac, um, in, uh, um, in France, in 2007, if I'm not mistaken, that the idea, uh, at least partially for this international conference, emerged. And after this, uh, um, the Paris conference was organized in 2008. In 2010, we had a um, conference in Barcelona, 2012 in Venice. Um, the gap was retaken again in Barcelona with uh, uh, also very interesting outcomes from uh, working groups. And uh, we thought we need a continuation of this process. And uh, because the GAP, GAP is focused precisely on what uh, Tatio mentioned, uh, this bringing um, our ideas together on different topics, but not being focused on the specific areas, but crossing between them and allowing for contamination of ideas and allow, allowing for this collectivization between different uh, levels of knowledge and expertise from the research to the practice. So the gap is precisely thought as this convergence point uh, where we have a very intensive outcome-oriented process to um, reach a kind of collective consensus, but also the dissent to also map 
what are our controversies, because this is what helps us to move forward. And uh, I would, um, we of course had here with this 3,000 people conference a uh, major challenge in trying to organize a process like the GAP, which is a very, a, pro a process that uh, requires that we go from working groups to assemblies and back to working groups where uh, the things are really uh, deepened, the topics are deepened, and then to the assemblies where they are uh, presented to the others and receive some kind of legitimation. So, Susanna uh, is going to um, present what, our, uh, what were our general objectives for this particular gap um, and how we try to address uh, this challenge. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the goal of the GAP, GAP was, as Gwalt already said, to create an intensive exchange between scientists, activists, artists, and practitioners, so the four groups of people and actors who love. <laughs> um, they were invited to participate in this conference and to gather in groups of, of no more than 20 people, we had a registration beforehand also for this, um, we would work on the three days in a row and come together every day and have a, and therefore have a, have a longer group, group phase where, where you can go more into depth than it's usually possible in a workshop or in a short session. Um, as Walter also pointed out, it's, it's a very output-oriented um, process, so the groups have been under a lot of time pressure and, and so it's also stressful for, for many groups. Um, as we heard from the feedback, um, on the other side, um, many groups felt that it, it can also be helped to be, to be productive in this, in this uh, process and to really concentrate on finding on what can the group uh, agree here and what has to be further discussed and to, to give a first proposal of what we can um, yeah, what we can agree on as, as a movement. Of course, we don't want to, we don't, un don't understand these proposals that are essential for the whole movement or for the whole conference. It was still only a small group, um, but we think it gives a first draft. And as Guato will explain later, on the community platform, there's also the possibility to discuss this further and to include more people into this process also. And another um, goal was to list open research questions that come up within the discussion as well as ideas for actions that might emerge um, within this group of, um, of experts or people already, already deep in, in, in the topic. <coughs> so these were the working groups. Okay. <laughs> um, these were the working groups in, in Leipzig. There were ni 19 working groups. They, um, all based on stirring papers that we called for in springtime, I think. So not all the groups will present their results today. Or not, not all the groups felt ready to present, but most of them will. And we'll have a short presentation of a maximum one minute. So you will get a little feeling of how these assemblies took place. We won't have the possibility to comment today uh, unfortunately, but you can. You're very welcome to comment later yeah. online. This will be the. It's the, like of the degross elevator pitch. No, we have and we have, the groups have to convince you to come and contribute further in the into the process mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. So I would like the presenters of the working groups to come up here. Good morning to everybody. So our group worked on an action plan based on the results of Barcelona conference. As a movement, we think that we need first a more clear identity, and that could be achieved by the writing of a sort of manifesto based on a consensus process in which to declare generally our sources, who we are, who we are not, what to do and how to do it. This will enable to easily map the movement. 
After that, we will need to organize the movement and thus create physical hubs and local clubs, hubs for, for example, Kande Craig's project for training and research, and clubs uh, as experienced by the Movimento for la Crescita Felice in Italy. Linked with virtual network, aim at facilitating knowledge exchange. After all, this process has a degrowth international movement will be easier to develop alliance with NGOs and conflicting oppositional subjects, and even with institutions. We constituted a working group to help this process, and we invite everyone to, to join us on the platform and, and not. Thank you. Into, we divided into three smaller working groups. One talked about what mean, does degrowth mean for the food and agriculture system. Um, I present shortly the results. Um, degrowth should land grab, free trade and globalization, consumption of meat, uh, GMOs, energy for, and footprint, and but grow because agriculture is also about growing should. Um, more, yeah, food, we need more, more food um, and less waste, <laughs> soil fertility, uh, resilience, diversity, self-sufficiency, access to land, water and seed, equality and participation. And we talk about our visions and alternatives. Our biggest uh, vision can be summarized at, as food sovereignty and, and the waste for the transition, we talked on local, um, national, EU, global, and society level. That's our, our proposals. <laughs> we will go back to redefining value because we had a little confusion with the groups. Namaskar, greetings from India and from the Redefining Value group. So we began by having a background reading of uh, Kumarappa, J.C. Kumarappa, who wrote a book in 1944 called uh, Economy of Permanence. He was uh, one of the leaders of the independence struggle in India and a disciple of Gandhi. And uh, then a kind of we opened up a Pandora's box which had so many questions that we really were only able to tackle a few of them. So the key themes that emerged were, were firstly how to decide on values and who decides on values because unless we have a clarity on the basis for values, we cannot have a basis for valuation in the material world. And the key principles that emerged out of this group were self-determination and self-realization for all, that these are the core non-negotiable values on which we would like to then build the details. And the aim of these values is reciprocity both among humans and between humans and the rest of the natural world. Um, and then the next question which was taken up was how can needs be distinguished from wants? So the primary needs were identified as, as subsistence, protection, affection, understanding, participation, leisure, creation, identity, all of it being embedded and leading towards freedom. Uh, and lastly, we looked at the question of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing in this part was, in, on the needs issue was very clear commitment that the needs of all must be met, uh, but the wants can be and should be gradually faded out or rapidly depending on the scale of the consumption. And now the, the, uh, the last big question we took up was, uh, can value be demonetized and denumerized, and should it be? And here we basically understood that there is intrinsic value and extrinsic value. And uh, well, intrinsic value is, for example, the joy of just being here and, and all the you know, camaraderie that we have found over the last four days. And the, the instrumental value comes under extrinsic, extrinsic value, and there can be multidimensional. And uh, lastly, there is accumulation 
in that is in the realm of accumulation that it becomes unidimensional and has the narrow and shallow criteria of money. So how to redefine value, make it multidimensional? Thank you. Um, yeah, in the basic income and degrowth group, we decided that we want an unconditional basic income. <laughs> We identified uh, three things why we want this unconditional basic income and we identified three or four things how we want this unconditional basic income and I think the, um, the visions why we want it are more important so I will just read them to you and I think an unconditional basic income would improve social justice and decrease inequalities which is a precondition for degrowth. Um, we also think that the UBI would provide free space for discussing and testing meaningful lifestyles in production and reappropriating autonomy and democracy. And we also think that the UBI would liberate people from social pressures and not having enough. So they could decrease compensatory consumption pressures and open the way to a needs-based economy. Thank you. now. Um, uh, we had a few controversial topics, two were discussed, uh, and uh, on the term um, urban anthropology, using anthropology as a base to understand the basic needs of children, the subgroup of our group couldn't agree on that and stated that they didn't know for sure what the basic needs uh, of people under 18 are, so they formulated the question, how can we create need-oriented spaces for children, including having them participate in this process? So researchers listen up. Uh, we are sure there's a bunch of scientific, scientific data on this, so if there's research about basic needs on which to base need-oriented spaces for children, please compile the results and upload on Degrowth Community website. Um, maybe meta-research is needed to compile and compare scientific data on this topic too. Uh, about the childhood concept, get rid of the childhood concept in terms, some of us said. Our subgroup agree, could agree on the following. On one hand, people are legally and socially discriminated by age. On the other hand, younger people have some specific needs. So how can we avoid the abuse of power? So re researchers and thinkers, here we go again. What protection or reaction to their needs do children need from a degrowth point of view? And what could be better discriminators than age for adulthood, issue by issue, like driver's license, alcohol, work, and so on? Actions, we divided actions for uh, uh, local communities and actions at the next degrowth conference. Communicate, uh, communities, please participate in creating a library of resources about this topic, videos of projects living out degrowth concepts in terms of children, book, articles, pro projects, contact speakers, and event organizers in local communities. Um, always organize daycare and babysitting during the event. Always invite under 18 specifically, and if possible, promote other forms of presentation more practical to families. Next, degrowth. Integrate under 18s in the conference. For example, pictograms, accessibility, call for papers, workshop, sorry, workshops of under 18s, um, and new form formats like uh, speakers who speak for adults, and then at the same time with the same topic also for children for under 18s. And to everybody in the room who might participate in organizing the next conference, we have a bunch of material online for the next uh, organizers. Live the utopia here. So um, uh, our group, our one consensual statement was that the commons should be an essential um, part of a degrowth society and it was also a discussion about the uh, degrowth should be the path towards a commons-based society. Um, there are the existing alternatives to stay in the market. Um, capitalist, uh, capitalism exploits the commons uh, and depends on unpaid women's work and enclosing nature. Uh, what we need is communization, um, so the reclaiming of commons is necessary for deep growth, uh, and commoning should be a foundational principle for a just society. Um, all social institutions could, could potentially be commons, um, and in a commons-based society, production and reproduction can be uh, brought together. 
Um, not to take anything away from Eleanor Ostrom, we came up with our uh, possible principles and ideas, uh, which are not exhaustive, uh, of course, um, for a common society, common space society. Um, commons should be created and rely on positive reciprocity. Uh, they affirm all peers' equality while embracing their difference, uh, are organized to meet needs, build collective uh, autonomy, social relatedness, share about, uh, abundance, speak about the limits imposed by private property, and build collective uh, competence. Well, good morning from the consumption group. We hope you had a good a cup of coffee this morning, because consumption is not only satisfaction of um, physical needs, but also psychological. So we identified four working groups to tackle these uh, questions, how and what to consume. Uh, we had one working group on rethinking consumption and drivers of consumption, the second one on standard and labels, the third one on education, and the fourth one on advertisement and marketing. Um, for the first working group, um, rethinking consumption and drivers of consumption, we think, uh, we first define that consumption is not just buying, that consumption in general should be a positive thing. And we also acknowledge that it's driven mainly by psychological needs, but also by, by physical ones, such as um, status and, so, and social recognition. So our proposals are that we find alternative fulfillments to um, satisfy these psychological drivers of consumption, so not just to reduce consum consumption itself and also to create time and space to build communities for inclusion. We have a research question, um, how to make um, long-lasting and high-quality products the new normal for the consumption. And we also like to um, yeah, pay attention to, to a specific action, and that is one year without staff. Some guys from a working group, Ben and Christina, realized this project, and you are free to join it. You can find it on Facebook. Yeah. The second uh, working group uh, about standard and labels, we have the proposals that all consumers should have a full awareness about impacts of consumptions for the whole value chain. And we like to have a reformation of the standardization process to, inv to involve affected uh, stakeholders in the production countries. Um, and we had a controversial issue, that is, should we have one sustainability label that covers all aspects on the whole value chain? So just to briefly add, in the realm of education, we would uh, wish more teachers like Ms. Butler. So we um, suppose mainstreaming of critical thinking across all school subjects, especially on consumption habits, social practices, social status, and advertisement. So uh, also to establish space for children to discover anew how to do and make things to gain from fulfillment from this. Controversial was if we should base the content of this teaching on communal decisions, what is like it and needed. In the realm of advertisement, we would propose to create a marketing watch organization with an official mandate to restrict advertisement. It was controversial if public spaces uh, if, uh, should if uh, advertisement spaces should be made public so that everybody could just publish ads wherever they want. We have open research questions. Should we restrict only or prohibit completely? the advertisement and what can we learn from the tobacco case. And our call for actions are join those who are already, who are already at fasting and inform about manipulation practices when you encounter them. The necessary shifts will only be democratic, but it needs to be an alternative to the representative democratic system we experience today. The system should be a combination of direct democracy and delegated democracy that has a binding mandate. Our working definitions for these include, first, Direct democracies are the fundamental building blocks. Second, delegated democracy is accountable to smallest units. Third, direct democracy needs some, self, uh, needs some fundamental norms or institu institutional safeguards. Fourth, direct democracy is a deliberative learning process and one which results in consensus. And fifth, 
fifth, there is a need to connect degrowth to, to direct demo democratic structures that are emerging. Thanks. Right. In the working group Learning for Degrowth, um, we thought that if we want to learn for degrowth in a more democratic and in a more skill-oriented way, there are many interesting proposals and concrete steps to be taken that came up in our group, group and here they are in one minute. Hi. This is the presentation of the results of the working group Learning for Degrowth. We had three very intense days and came out with many proposals and results. We discussed on the question of whether we need a new system for education or shall we transform the one we have? What do we need to learn for a degrowth society and how shall we learn this? So in the case of the system, system question, we are consensual that we want to promote critical pedagogy, critical thinking for emancipatory process, non-instrumental, and we want to strengthen in education. We want to promote democratic pedagogy <laughs> To have more role models. And we want to include open source software in the system, for example, to host their parents or schools. So these were the results of the working group. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it. And we learned a lot. <laughs> if you're interested in going deeper to the results, <laughs> Even deeper, uh, you will find a lot of minutes and uh, documentation stuff on the platform. So, um, the Money and Finance Group, our group agreed that uh, the group assembly process is an important format for the degrowth movement, but it does not work equally well for all topics. Money and finance is a highly controversial field, and in the short time frame, our very diverse group could not develop a shared opinion about how exactly the monetary sphere is pushing growth. So it was hardly possible to come up with precise research questions or even consensual proposals. Nonetheless, here are some. Does this work? I need to be very concise here. This is not poetry. Um, money should be, should be less important in degrowth societies. To come. To come to a stationary or shrinking economy in a peaceful way, we need, I mean, we need corrections to the monetary system. Cooperative banks managed by communities and not the least, complementary currencies could play a good role in a degrowth society and should be allowed to develop. 
Um, there's much more on the platform if you're interested. And finally, let me mention one feedback card of the group assembly, which um, one participant gave us. It framed, money can buy us love. <laughs> We already died, did. sorry for the mistake. <laughs>
Basically, have the results on the other question, can high-tech be produced democratically and sustainably in a degrowth society, on which we established four visions, like long-term perspectives. I don't know if I have time to read everything. I don't think so, so I'll just read the visions for now. Um, it's, it would be open source learning spaces, like to like first schools and then also any other learning spaces to bring more tinkering, do-it-yourself, open source into the learning process. Um, second vision, more intuitive technology, oh sorry, <laughs> designed for all, uh, more accessible and all. Then the production chains, which also links to raw materials, uh, has to become, well, more human. And then the gender and the, the other discrimination questions about technology, how to make it more accessible. So please come to the community space and, and contribute and link up and put into action. Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm presenting the results of the Transport Mobility Group and uh, what I can say in the beginning is it was difficult to uh, achieve consensus and I think the problem is that we all like to travel. But I think in general what the group also supports is that we need uh, less space, like in the future we need to use less space for this traveling and less energy. Um, and then we had three subgroups discussing certain issues. So for example one issue would be free public transport. Um, because this means that more people travel and less means of transport with less energy, but we also thought about uh, that it shouldn't be like that people start living in trains and buses because they drive around every day because it's free. So we, we need some measures um, that people don't do more trips because it's free. Then we had one group which uh, discussed the issue of behavioral change so that people realize they should change their tra uh, transport behavior. And there could be some measures like um, taxation, of course, taxa um, higher taxation of non-unsustainable forms of transport. And um, uh, then we had, uh, okay, I will finish with one very concrete example. Example, what we think is right. We need to make our streets, uh, again, livable spaces where people and kids can play and meet and not dangerous places like they are now. Thanks. from Urban Transformation Group. Uh, for our group, the GAP process was one that didn't quite work at the start. Our first two days were quite productive, but many people felt that it was too outcome focused, too, uh, yeah, too much efficiency based, and we weren't able to go into deep discussions in the first days. So it was, we, we got a lot done, but it was kind of stressful to get there. <coughs> so then on the third day, we kind of stepped back a bit. We lost about half our participants. And it, was, and it was more of a case of less is more, and we managed to go more in depth into two interesting discussions. <laughs> <coughs> one, one, we discussed the idea that use rights should gradually replace property rights, and another one was came to a proposal for uh, stopping urban sprawl. And we we said that the problem is that monocultural, uh, residential, and uh, commercial sprawl is a problem that is pushing out agriculture and is mainly a result of cheap fossil fuels. So as a suggestion, we want to promote multifunctional, diverse urban centers, including services, infrastructure, and food, food production, etc. And then we have some open research questions, such as how much living space does each person require in term and also outdoor space, and also what, what does quality affect this requirement? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, I present the results of the Social Security Working Group. We split it up into four, uh, into three groups, which were discussing different questions. The first group was discussing more or less principles of Social Security, um, which was based on the question, "What is justice?" And yeah, challenge, a challenging point was uh, should social security be conditional or unconditional. The second group tried to design a very specific model for social security system, which for the process of transformation, this is very important. And um, yeah, especially with regard to certain path dependencies, but there are very many questions still open. 
and the third group was discussing the relation of the current uh, social security system and growth and they came to the conclusion that um, its growth dependency is more a matter of the political framing than it is a matter of growth by itself. And there are quite, uh, yeah, there are some drivers, uh, growth drivers in the current system. And yeah, if you're, at least some of the results will be uploaded uh, on the community platform if you're interested to look more at the details then yeah, feel free to do so and yeah, if you have any suggestions on literature or any other kind of proposals, yeah, please just hand it in on the platform. Thanks. So um, I would first of all uh, like to thank, not, not yet this, um, um, uh, the presenters uh, that came here, but I would also like uh, to ask if there are facilitators from the groups on the room that are not uh, presenting here, that they stand up, uh, because we have invited, uh, um, uh, we tried to look for many facilitators for uh, two facilitators per working group. I think it was a very courageous uh, to take on this uh, task uh, of this demanding uh, process and that they managed uh, till the end of these uh, three days to really achieve uh, what I think are very interesting results of this um, uh, collective process. So, um, as you have heard, uh, there are, sorry, in the, in the plat in, in online platform, most of the groups have uh, posted very detailed minutes some are really amazingly detailed to the level of detail that of the, each word that was spoken. And um, so I'm sure you will enjoy uh, reading through them if you are interested in any topics. And I bring you the invitation to ask participants in this conference that attended scientific lectures, workshops, cultural events, and you got all this input. Some of these inputs will certainly cross with the topics that have been appro approached by the groups, and as you heard, the groups want to continue working. And we want, we, 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 we have thought of this process, process to have a continuity between this conference and the next one. Like we, we took the results from Barcelona, we gave them as input to the groups, but we really want that in the next two years, um, the groups are live, maybe new groups will emerge, but that you are all part of this collective experience as part of the larger degrowth movement or umbrella or whatever we are, which we still don't know, but are trying to understand. So um, I would like to give you this um, challenge uh, to join this process and bring really your input. And uh, uh, thank you all for um, um, uh, the amazing results. And thank you all for being here. Yeah, vielen Dank auch noch mal an euch. Okay, thank you very, very much. And uh, this is possibly very nice for those who didn't attend uh, the gap because the presenters uh, really, really uh, gave a really good impression here. And now before we enter in a short break, there's a short report. And nobody knows when this was prepared. So the organizational team wants to give us also a short input. So, Jonas, the floor is yours. Hello. My name is Jonas. Some of you know me from the info for degrowth uh, mail um, communication because some of you, we corresponded already, right? Now, the conference in figures, facts and figures. I was told that it's going to be, uh, have to be fast and I'll start with the relevant issues concerning the program. 
Well, there were over 400 single events, eight keynotes, 20 panels, 91 scientific sessions, 200 workshops, over 30 cultural and artistic events, and 19 gap working groups. <laughs> so, no, <laughs> Zu der Anzahl an Teilnehmenden. Ja. Ähm, wir hatten knapp 3000 Teilnehmende, offizielle Anmeldungen knapp 2800 in der Datenbank, es kamen auf der Konferenz nochmal 200-300 dazu. Davon 41,5% weiblich und 37,5% männlich. Juhu. <lacht> Mathematiker im Elfenbeinturm fragen sich, wo bleiben die anderen 21 Prozent? Die haben keine Angaben gemacht, sie sind schlecht. So, zu den Workshop- und Speakern, also den Referentinnen. Hier hatten wir 606, die zu dieser Konferenz gekommen sind. 38 Prozent davon weiblich, 46 Prozent davon männlich und 60 Prozent davon Ebenfalls ohne Angabe. Bei den Teilnehmenden konnten wir darauf keinen Einfluss ausüben. Bei den Referenten, das kam auch vorhin schon mal auf, war es tatsächlich ein Anliegen, hier eine Gender Balance ähm, herzustellen. Im Organisationsteam ist es uns noch ein bisschen besser gelungen. Hier ein Foto zum Organisationsteam. Zwei zumindest. Ähm, der Kern umfasst 70 Personen von denen 55% weiblich sind und 45% männlich. Ebenfalls Wert haben wir darauf gelegt, dass das Koalitionsteam aus einer weiblichen Person, Nina, und einer männlichen Person, Daniel, besteht. Auch im Pressebereich haben wir eine Pressesprecherin und einen Pressesprecher. Nun zum internationalen Charakter der Konferenz. Vorhin wurde gemutmaßt, 80% seien deutsch, 20% ähm, Kämen aus dem Ausland, das ist relativ gut getroffen. 19% der Teilnehmenden kommen aus dem Ausland, 42% der Referentinnen kommen aus dem Ausland und sage und schreibe 74 Nationalitäten sind hier vertreten. Nationalitäten. And somebody said it's almost one third of the world because if you consider that uh, the world has about 200 nationalities, then you can say that almost a third of them were represented at degrowth. Now let's talk about food. I really hope that you enjoyed the food. Die Rote Beete, eine Gemüsekooperative hier in der Nähe von Leipzig, hat im Oktober letzten, Oktober letzten Jahres schon angefangen, Gemüse für uns anzubauen. <lacht> Insgesamt sagen schreibe 1250 Kilogramm Gemüse. Das hat dazu geführt, dass wir täglich 2800 Mahlzeiten serviert bekommen haben. Und um der Mittagsschläfe zu entrinnen, hat dann die grüne Minna uns 32 Kilogramm Kaffee gekocht. Dieses Bild soll die Privatüberkünfte verdeutlichen, die wir ambitionierterweise uns äh, relativ im Frühling schon auf die Fahne geschrieben haben. Wir wollen möglichst vielen Menschen die Möglichkeit geben, hier umsonst bei Leipziger und Leipzigerinnen unterzukommen. Das ist jetzt so dass wir 350 Menschen die Möglichkeit bieten konnten und vor allen Dingen auch den Menschen, die diese Möglichkeit gegeben haben, sehr dankbar sind dafür, dass es ja, immerhin 350 Menschen gibt. Diejenigen, die nicht in einer Privatunterkunft oder einem Hotel oder einem Hostel gekommen sind, die sind auf dem Campingplatz umgekommen, das waren auch immerhin 200 Menschen. Nun, zum einen der wichtigsten Teil dieser Konferenz. Come to, the, come to the most important part of this conference, the helpers. We had 950 helpers who worked for about four hours at this conference and that is quite impressive. We 
We had 76 uh, people were responsible for the mindestens 16 bis 20 Stunden geholfen haben. We will have we still have three uh, topics to go. So the website was visited by 3,000 people per day. This is a very impressive figure. 7,000 people clicked on the live stream at the opening panel. There are m more than 1,000 people who are registered at, in the community platform. 83 scientific papers are online, 383 paper, scientific papers, uh, papers are online, and um, about 100 are publicly accessible, meaning that scientists have the opportunity to make their papers public to the audience. Um, das Budget. Das Budget umfasst 370.000 Euro, die wir an Ausgaben hatten. Und so, und so wie es aussieht, wird es And it will be able to recuperate that money again. 41% of uh, this budget was covered by your registration fees, and the rest will be covered by partner organizations and uh, others. I've bombarded you with a lot of figures, but there are some things which we couldn't uh, put a figure on. And these are the experience, the exchange, the stress, the knowledge, as well as, as well as the joy that we had during the conference. And this is what we want to express with this image here. Well, let's all have a nice break now. Yes, there will be a break, but in, in case you no longer have your program, we will start after 30 minutes. So the break will be 30 minutes. We will then have our closing up session. So we'll start at half past, so be punctual.